Okay, let's get started. Um, yeah, I think uh, before the break I was about to comment on uh, there are some issues that are very important in, in governance. And they're, they're not just issues of the, the transport system, the internet and its protocols. They're issues dealing with uh, things like cybercrime, uh, law enforcement in an international arena, rights, and that's, you know, if you believe the UN Declaration of Human Rights, uh, some do, some don't. Uh, there, there are treaties that have to eventually uh, get involved in, in cyber uh, crimes that can be internationally agreed on. Otherwise, we're, we're in this funny situation that, yeah, I can uh, do things in one country that are perfectly legal, and yet they're perfectly illegal in the rest of the world, and I can't do anything about it, except block, and blocking is increasingly hard. There are issues that are out there which I think are fundamental issues. You know, it's, it's very difficult now on the internet to, to know whether you're a person or a dog. To, you know, it's hard to trace where things come from. Uh, there are people who propose that that should be eliminated that in fact there should be a absolute identification. Uh, that raises a bunch of technical problems, but more it raises very serious uh, international um, policy questions and freedom questions. I'm not gonna decide, I have my own opinion, I'm sure each one of you do, does on that particular issue, but they need a place to address that. And th they need a place which is above the arguing, uh, you know, which, how do you number domains or how do you collect money, et cetera. And I ha have not seen that type of organization really bite in yet or any ideas. Do you have any ideas? Or are we constantly going to be in this nitpicking mode? Well, I, I would like to, I would like to, it seems to me that we should be able to do this. The, the how to get from here to here, I'm not so sure, but you know, we, we've done it in other, the more physical domains, even though, I mean, countries are interesting. I mean, they have, they have a lot of self-interest that they don't want criminal activity, at least that they don't support, to happen in their country. They don't want it to happen outside of the country. And I think that's probably fairly common. You know, we have, we have extradition treaties and things that, allow something like this in the physical world, even though countries themselves still have spies and still do things that are, you know, by our, our standards, illegal. So I don't see there's any, it should be possible to do this. I don't know how to get from, you know, how to create a set of rules that people can, you know, UN conventions or something like that, how, how that, how that can work. I certainly don't, would worry about the, you know, notion of whether, you, can you still be anonymous on the internet or it does everyone, can everyone be tracked? I mean, the what's going on in the EU with privacy is sort of going in the other direction. Some people think too far, but, um, you know, so there's clearly a lot of tension about that. So, but I, I wish I knew how to, Get there. Get that, make that happen. Yeah, just on that little story, and then I'll ask you, uh, many years ago, there was a NSF sponsored meeting. Yeah, I think, no, it must have been NRC, National Research Council, on anonymity on the internet. And I think most of us went into that meeting saying, of course you should be, a, it would be anonymous. At the end of the meeting, it wasn't that obvious, because once you started digging down, there were a whole set of issues that were just not obvious and required a lot of rethinking of what you mean by anonymity, what you mean by liability, a whole set of things. And nothing ever came of that, and it's still a, a big argument. John? Yes. Do you see a way to get, to get some rationality and to start addressing the serious problems as opposed to? Well, actually, I think, I think that's also, uh, you know, um, yeah, I agree with Bob that it's uh, uh, when the requirement is explicit and uh, clear, then you know uh, it should be achieved. Uh, 
cooperatively with uh, technology development as well. So, but uh, you know, I think in the it, it, it's 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 I think in a sense uh, you know it's a, it's a happening. I mean, it's working. So, for example, the you know the um, identifier on a you know IP address, for example, right? And the, then you know, so a lot of uh, cyber crime, <coughs> you know, the investigation starts from the where the this uh, packet coming from and the source IP address things. And so the next question is, is, is the source IP address, you know, trustable, reliable? And, uh, you know, so uh, um, then, you know, do we need uh, some kind of, uh, you know, IP address and, uh, you know, the ownership uh, to be binded in a certain way? And then you know, if we want to trust the, this destination of IP address uh, to, to who owns that and who operates in that, is there any way? And then you know, there is a, a kind of steps uh, uh, to be developed for the, such as things, and the, especially for the DNS, for example, DNS database to be uh, you know kind of trustable. And then you know, is this a proper organization operating this uh, DNS database so that the IP address and the name mapping is uh, properly trustable? Uh, you know that kind of be. Uh, things it uh, you know being uh, discussed at the IETF and then they being achieved. So the now the question is that uh, so the IP address to be you know kind of uh, uh, allocated to whom and then you know so now the a lot of uh, crimes to be you know uh, worked on based on IP addresses, but uh, then the IP address can be used for the multiple services. Therefore, if you block. The IP address, and then you know there is a kind of a multiple services going to be blocked, so it's called the overblocking, right? And uh, therefore, well, uh, we need some other way for the uh, you know kind of a more toward the accurate uh, way to achieve that kind of uh, uh, operation, right? Then uh, in order to do that, then in you know, what kind of uh, things we can do in the global address space is one of the way, and uh, also the do we think of, uh, do we need a kind of a port uh, allocation and then identifying a port and then identifying binding with uh, users with uh, uh, our owner of uh, to be authorized and uh, then you know so um, I think uh, you know various kind of uh, those things uh, are being processed from the operation part as well so uh, it's a really depend on uh, you know um, the uh, what kind of a discussion, what kind of a things we should achieve? So uh, you mentioned about a certain nation uh, being a kind of a cyber crime uh, source, uh, haven type of a things. And then you know, what do we want uh, that space to be uh, more clear on that so that, that we can stop that, we can stop that kind of uh, activities. So uh, I think it's... Uh, Doable and yeah. uh, should be discussed. Yes. Where, where? Uh, well, I'll add one more thing, and then I'll ask the question of where. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the equivalent of the Geneva Conventions for cyber uh, attacks, which is you know becoming a weapon, right? And and sometimes a nation state weapon, sometimes criminal weapon. Uh, by, uh, ransomware is a criminal weapon, right? Should there be at national level, international level, agreements on things that nation states should not do in times of peace, right? as as there are for uh, you know we don't allow chemical warfare, we don't allow a whole bunch, at least theoretically we you know there is agreement among nations that that's a correct thing to forbid at least in principle. Uh, attacks on critical infrastructure of a nation in times of peace is roughly the same type of thing. Should there be international agreement on that? And if so, how? Because, in fact, the vehicles we have for discussing it are weak. They, if you try to discuss this among the UN in general, uh, or most legislators, they're not sure what you're talking about. And if you try to talk to technical people per se, they're not sure they're interested in it. So there's a mechanism missing at, at all these many levels on who, who is, how do you get a, a group together to really talk 
that are, that are multiple uh, talents. Well, I, th I think that's not, you know, that uh, complicated thing, right? So if something, you know, the, the wanna cry and the other things, if the, you know, one, one single nation involved, uh, you, know, you know, to attack something, and then you know, that's a, certainly the nation to nation uh, discussion, which is uh, relating, I mean, similar to the kind of war type of uh, situation. And if the person is uh, doing the person in those country A is uh, attacking something, and then you know, so that's a, if you know that was identified as a crime, then it's a kind of there is a uh, international uh, rules that uh, when the crime is uh, you know. Uh, starting from a, a nation and then in you know, attacking B nation, then you know what's uh, A and B uh, should talk about. This is uh, basically, uh, you know, it's it's a working uh, even today. Then uh, identifying that person in your country, I want to you know kind of arrest that person, and uh, then you know so message coming from a B to A, and then the A is going to work, and then you know. Uh, there, 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 there is a defined way. So, uh, um, in a in a kind of a more to the crime relationship, and uh, you know also nation nation relationship, uh, and uh, so uh, we have a kind of wisdom to uh, to deal with you know those things in a, in a uh, existing uh, uh, society. And uh, so the so the question is which part. Uh, utilization of the cyberspace and the internet, which part is uh, different from those existing rules and uh, uh, system? I mean, it's also made more challenging because it, it's, you know, well, we've seen recent um, things with people taking IoT, taking over IoT devices, you know, cameras and the like. And so it's very easy. It's so if you have a set of devices you can take over, you can mount an attack from somewhere else, from someone else's IP address. Right. And so figuring, you know, and it's probably not the home user whose camera it is, they're not doing the attack, they're just having their exactly. their devices taken over. And so the figuring out who the actual, the, the person behind the attack is the challenge. But I, I, I agree with you that it seems like the laws we have today that if you break a power plant, that's probably illegal in most places, and it doesn't. It shouldn't matter whether it was done because you did it over the internet or you drove a truck there or something. But it's all the challenge. I think it's a lot harder to figure out who is the actual attacker, and it's very easy to hide it. Well, that's that's part of the problem. It, it, it may be illegal. I think more complicated than that. Even. Yeah. It may be illegal to attack a power plant within your country. Is it illegal to attack one in another country? It depends on how your laws are structured and how you get proof. Uh, can you can you actually extradite under that? Extradition is a multi-year process. And so, in fact, many of these things are difficult to actually do because there's not a there's not a, a fast track international agreement on how to do it. And cyberspace just makes it more complicated because you may not know where it's originating from. Right. Uh, the um, international police. What is it called? Uh, Interpol. 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 Yeah. Uh, there was years ago. There was uh, the head of their cybercrime thing. The Japanese uh, pointed out that there are many countries in the world where they can't even prosecute cybercrime. Back then, it was Mexico. You, the legal system just not a, did not allow you to prosecute it. It just wasn't written in those terms, and so. Anything you did for Mexico, you couldn't. Now, that may have changed recently. But the difficulty of actually doing anything right. is the problem. So, uh, you know, and difficulties of gathering proof is the other problem. I mean, there are many, many problems, some of which could be baked into the, the software. You could do a lot better there. Uh, but again, it requires international agreement not only at a policy level, but a technical level, because you may have to change things. And uh, I don't see the mechanism. You know, uh, you know I, I spent time at the FCC. You know, we discussed some of these things. 
and uh, it was very difficult to find anybody who understood what I was talking about because, in fact, they were lawyers, very good lawyers, very good utility people, but they just didn't understand the terms. And so you know, I'm lo I think I'm looking for almost a, a place where people can gather to discuss these things mm -hmm. uh, in a free, open environment, and I don't see it right now. I mean, there could be places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, yeah, I, I, I completely agree on that. You know, so I've been, I've been thinking about kind of three entities, you know, cybersecurity, which is uh, on, or the you know, kind of economic use of, uh, well, the normal use of the internet, and the cyber crime uh, discussion, and the cyber defense discussion, which is a national security thing. So uh, those are the three um, different operations, different purpose, uh, you know, f uh, to, to, um, to discuss the um, the cybersecurity things, uh, but the you know the the, the common uh, background to talk about or the exchange ideas and then you know the solving the problem that kind of uh, uh, structure is not achieved. That's what I agree, and then uh, that's a very interesting point that I've been you know kind of uh, proposing that kind of a structure should be defined properly um, up among those three. And that's one thing. And then before uh, getting to that, then I, I also agree that it's a, it's been very difficult because of the internet. And you know, so, uh, uh, you know, if the even the international entity is going to be doing the bad thing to uh, you know another country, right? So the Dave's country and then you know the citizen in my country is doing something, and then you know, usually that is a husband you know, between between you and me. But then, you know, the internet, the bad guy wants to use a machine in right. Bob's place and right. then attacking that. Then, you know, so it's a really important that they're cooperatively working with the Bob. So uh, this is a third entity uh, to be involved for the solving the problem. So uh, is this uh, kind of things was, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, traditional way of solving the crimes internationally, maybe maybe not at that point. And then they you know, uh, should be working on uh, this type of uh, um, the w uh, way uh, and uh, also the system uh, adding to the existing kind of a, uh, international crime solution. Right? Especially in a world, uh, as many of us know, where some of these things can cause escalation into really serious um, conflicts, and, and yeah. I'm going to turn uh, to our uh, audience uh, for see if there's any questions. I'm sure he has one. Okay. Um, during your talk, you spoke about like a, a number of multi-governmental organizations on a global level. I have a question saying that most of these organizations are primarily Western invented and dominated by, let's say, Western staff and a top leadership. How would you see, is there any changes taking place from non-Western nations that are trying to take over positions within these organizations to do something of a redesigning of the agenda setting of these organizations, thereby trying to influence um, managing or governing the internet? This is a question to me. Okay, I think you are the so, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a well, Interesting question because uh, you know um, I don't think uh, not uh, you know uh, most of the I don't think that most of the say uh, you know the global or international organizations are uh, kind of a biased by our Western nations uh, I don't think that way and uh, for example the you know kind of uh, uh, UN based discussion is a uh, different from the you know. The say I can best discussion and then you know so the government involvement is uh, not uh, equal. I mean in terms of a uh, uh, view from the uh, you know bias of uh, Western versus uh, non-Western things. So uh, I think uh, you know the, the diversity and the variety uh, existing, which is uh, by the way the very important one. And uh, so uh, they mentioned about the you know kind of uh, he he was I I kind of uh, recorded. Uh, um, the UN, ITU, 
and the uh, World Economic Forum. He, he mentioned those three organizations. Okay, so this is also you know, uh, showing the diversity of uh, nature. Right? U UN is a kind of a UN members based. ITU is also uh, you know, kind of I believe it's a smaller set for the telecommunication uh, focusing, uh, al al although it's uh, you know derived from the UN. And the World Economic Forum was an interesting place that, uh, you know, it's a World Economic Forum and then you know, so the business point and the economic point uh, from the both the government and the industry and sometimes the individual getting together. Therefore, the, you know, the, uh, I believe in uh, general, the, I, I remember the, a lot of uh, discussion on the World Economic Forum uh, relating to the internet uh, was uh, more to the, you know, uh, flee you know, randomly discussed, which was uh, generating a lot of, uh, uh, of course, a result out of a World Economic Forum and also the trust of the world place called the World Economic Forum. Therefore, the, you know, some of the internet governance discussion uh, tend to be uh, using the World Economic Forum uh, framework because of that reason, right? So, uh, you know, if uh, some, uh, well, US-centric or Western-biased uh, community, then they know it's a naturally, uh, it's a hesitated to participate from, or, or the center of the discussion should be accommodated by those uh, areas, naturally from a non-Western-biased countries. Right? And that then the UN is a more formally defined that, uh, you know, kind of a balanced or the member-based, but then the, the weaker, uh, there is a weaker, uh, nations and other nations. And then ITU is a telephone based, uh, telecommunication based, and uh, then, you know, so, so, yeah, so variety of things. So it's a very interesting way that, uh, you know, that we do have a variety of uh, places already for the discussing all of the thing. If nobody else in the audience would like uh, to ask a question. Me, let me answer. Uh. Uh, I think there has been a transition. If I look back 10 years ago, 10, 15 years ago, uh, most of the discussion was Western-based because most of the activity was in the West, yep. okay? Now as, as China and the, and the other Asian countries and Japan, Japan came earlier than that, but still as the Asian countries get involved, it's now important to them to take part in the discussion. And so now you, you have these conflicts between, um, which slowly are getting ironed out, some of them, some of them are not, between Western ideas uh, and Asian ideas, which are different, okay? They're, they're culturally different. And uh, hopefully that will arrive at some point in the game in an international uh, agreement, you know, a, a uh, international cyber civilization, but it's been a slow process. And some of it deals with, with uh, international politics. Uh, and some of it even deals with, I think they're called Western countries, which may not agree with the rest of the West. But it's, it's been a complicated space just because international politics tends to be difficult. Um, Right. I, I mean, I sort of wonder if we need something new. I mean, can the existing organizations, you know, I, this is just a question. I don't know what the answer is. But, you know, is, is cyberspace, is the Internet different enough from the, you know, what came before that we need a slightly different structure or, you know, I mean, at some point we created the ITU, I guess it when it was telegraphs and they evolved to telephones. But, you know, it's not clear to me they're the right one to do this, but maybe we do need something that's, you know, yeah. understands the fact that it's not, there, there are nation parts of the internet, but there are a lot of non-nation parts of the internet and it works differently and, you know, Maybe the ground rules need to be different. That's how the I, I can establish, right? That was a totally new uh, governance, uh, decision-making model. And uh, then, uh, so, as I mentioned, then the, when the ICANN was established, that was uh, more to the smaller, uh, 
you know, the community, the internet community war. And uh, now internet community is uh, very difficult to identify. It's a uh, much broader uh, because, uh, you know, what we are saying that the civilization things, therefore, the, I, I agree that, uh, you know, it's always uh, thinking about the kind of new proper way of uh, discussion places, but uh, for, for this uh, special, uh, well, the newly developed uh, uh, spe space. Uh, I, I'm always tempted in, uh, at Wusan, Wuchan? Yeah, Wuchan. I, I, doing the uh, discussions of not-for-profits, so I wanted the opportunity to try this, but it didn't work for a whole bunch of reasons. But the, the notion of the, uh, a global not-for-profit to address these from a study standpoint. You know, the, the type of thing that Rand did in the early days, I'm not suggesting Rand necessarily, but the type of thing where, where you have a, a challenge, back then was nuclear, right? You have a funding source that isn't dependent every year on satisfying a, a set of contributors, but has continuity and a mission, which is to make concrete proposals for how we evolve the mess we have now into something that can be governable and can be progressive. Because we're, you know, I think we're, we're just beginning the internet space. You know, my, my favorite comment is if you think the last 25 years were a while, wait for the next five. Right? Because we're gonna evolve, if evolution does not stop. And these issues are gonna be, become much more severe and so I think the need for a place where people can actually address the problems, uh, and I don't know of any place right now, and that's an opportunity I think that uh, is sorely needed. But anyway, that's uh, yeah. I mean, it may it may need a forcing function that something bad happens. Uh, that, hope, yeah, yeah. I mean, because that seems to be the sort of how the UN got created. That's right. And so there, there has to be something that happens that, that causes people to be willing to do something different. And, um, yeah. Well, that's, that's essentially how Rand got organized in the first place. Because well, so it's uh, also available, I think, possible that, the, you know, yeah, remember I mentioned about the kind of three, say, uh, structure or pyramid and the functions uh, among the cybersecurity, cyber crime, cyber. Uh, defense thing, right? And the, then the cyber defense is a nation to nation. Cyber crime is a more more toward the personal crime type of a thing. Cyber security is a uh, internet space, right? And the, therefore, you know, those trees got the, their own way of approaches, but the, that it's really important to uh, communicating uh, among themselves and then also establish some kind of a protocols or architecture for the sharing. Yeah, I, uh, by the way, I like that. Those three areas, yeah. I think that makes sense. Heavily interrelated. Yeah. But separate. But, but separate. No, separate. Oh, and the policy are separate in those. Doesn't three. mean they can't be studied in the same general place. Right. Yeah. Just different group of people. Exactly. But they, they should work together. They have to work together. Yeah. And, and the, 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 yeah, I agree that. Um, any? I have a follow up question on, on, on what you is discussing, maybe in a broader uh, sense like much of the civilization you've been speaking about seems to be from a more liberal perspective of civilization right do you think there could be a competing sense of cyber civilization by other nations and assumingly that this taking off could there be for example um, an interest on, among emergent cyber civilizations let's say nations that are at the beginning of integrating cyber technology into the societies like in the global south could there be for example could there be a competition for these nations and could these nations favor one model over the other well i think clearly we're seeing nations favoring different models i mean we're seeing that today um it's unclear where that goes i don't know that one well yeah, there's going to be proponents of both. But, you know, at the same time, we have countries that allow, that may have strict controls, but at the same time, there's a lot of commerce that happens between the country, all, all countries. And so that, in some ways, I, I would like to think that the need for commerce will sort of keep the 
doors open and allow direct communication. Just you know, you you know, you you can't have uh, just deciding this as an example. You can't have manufacturing in one country where the it's being manufactured for a company country in an a company in another country who's selling to a third country without being able to communicate very well. You know, you can't just have people in airplanes and talking over telephones. There's all this stuff that flows over the internet. So that's at least, I think, a, you know, keeps the doors open for communication and you don't want to block those, most, you know, that any country who wants to promote that kind of commerce is going to want to block that kind of traffic. Yeah, that's 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 very. Uh, I I completely agree with that. And then uh, so in the history of uh, you know um, the the all the you know kind of different opinions and the other things among the nations, but the, then the economy is has been the kind of a common you know target. So uh, you know the uh, commerce and the, is a directly on the economy and then the economy. For, for example, the you know, when we are talking to the single country next door, and the, then you know, so the internet is uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, tools to uh, investigate and then the surveillance purposes of the citizens in the co country. But at the same time, then you know, that one nation wants to be a kind of globally growing on the economy. Therefore, the you know use of the internet was a kind of a separated discussion. I know that uh, you know coexisting in a. Uh, single nation. So uh, uh, I think it's a door open for the economic commerce is the right thing. And the, but the important thing is that we do have a much m more, more things to open the door, right? So, uh, you know, like uh, uh, saving the children's life and the education, health, and also the um, health of this planet type of a discussion should be the kind of common themes and the, the disaster recovery and the, you know that kind of ideas to be shared uh, is also uh, you know we can open the another door for the different nations. I think we're probably getting towards a good ending. Uh, any up desires for a final comment, Bob? Yeah, this is an interesting topic. We're not going to be done for a long time. I mean, the, the structures we have in the physical world, or what do you call the alternate to the internet, it took a long time to get to where they are. That you know, The internet has happened by comparison very quickly. And so I agree with you. I think this is just, this is the, maybe this is the end of the beginning, but it's going to evolve a lot. And the technology will probably be the, have been the easy part. It's the how we use it and how we, you know, trying to avoid saying regulation or control. Um, how we figure out what the right model is that works, you know, for individuals, for countries, for organizations, for regions. That that's going to keep us busy for a long time. So yeah, I think it's uh, really important that the discussion like this, I mean, starting from the, you know, kind of experts on a, you know, kind of internet space and development, but uh, then, you know, it's uh, really sometimes difficult to, um, uh, I understand the, you know, kind of uh, semantics and the meaning toward the new civilization from the technology point of view. So. Um, I was wondering how the you know I've been, I've been trying to uh, approach that way that uh, how that uh, uh, you know the architectural uh, structure of technology could be properly understood by the much broader people so that uh, you know any kind of a governance to be uh, I hope properly uh, discussed and then effectively um, for the uh, various. Uh, different uh, uh, point of view, like, uh, you know, kind of safetyness, crime, and, uh, you know. So uh, in order to do that, then I certainly agree that uh, we really need uh, uh, the way to uh, share the voices and the discussion and uh, share the wisdom. Uh, you know, we should uh, definitely 
uh, working to uh, search for that kind of a place. I agree, and I thank the audience and the speakers, and uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.